welcome all of you to our weekly communities of practice Sunday check-in session, a half hour of Dharma, reflection and community connections. If you are a new member of our community, please accept our wholehearted welcome to you. If you have any questions regarding our practices and topics, we are all here to help. It is customary for people in Australia to begin any meetings by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. So in the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we walk, study, and reside on, the Woody Woody people of the Darwo Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people of today. And I also pay my respect to the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all are. The check-in sessions have been developed by our communities of practice team and the entire community. Thanks for the suggestions from Stevens and Waring. For this new year, based on the purpose we already have, we put an overarching purpose for the first half year sessions. Apart from the weekly topics, we'd like to invite you to ponder how we can connect our discussions and reflections to our daily lives. Last week, Dr. Jonathan Page guided us to develop a luminous insight into the nature of this human experience. This week, we will address the final pillar of well-being, purpose in life. So let's welcome Dr. Page. Well, thank you very much, Thao Ming, and auspicious greetings to each and all from the 10 directions today. Uh, and we're going to conclude our focus on the four pillars of well-being. And you'll remember they include awareness, connection, insight. And today we will discuss purpose in life. And we'll notice that each of the four interconnect and synergize. So purpose in life will complete the set. To look at the wonders of well-being together, we can notice that with deep awareness of the nature of being, in this world and the associated universal interconnection, we may develop a luminous insight into the nature of this human experience, which in and of itself may provide purpose and meaning in life. So let's begin with a brief meditation together where we can explore some of these factors. And so to meditate on the body is to allow awareness to arise of the interconnection with all other beings and perhaps experience insight and a sense of purpose in life. So gently shut your eyes and let them soften and begin to relax. And with awareness, relax your forehead and your cheeks and your lips and all the facial muscles your neck muscles, your shoulders, and your arms, especially the hands, the fingers, and the thumbs. And relax your back muscles. Let a wave of softness move downwards from your neck down to your bottom. And relax the thighs, the calf muscles, and the feet and the toes, and really neglect nothing. Relax the whole body completely. And now focus your awareness on the tip of your nose and the nostrils, and follow the spontaneous rhythm of your breath that has been continuing without break through the entire lifetime. And be aware that the air you breathe in has also sustained the life of millions of fellow human beings and other creatures to which we are all connected. So notice the air moving in through the nostrils, perhaps feeling cool and sharp, but perhaps warm, filling the lungs. And when the lungs are full, there is a pause 
and then the air all by itself begins to leave the body through the nostrils. When the lungs are empty, there's another pause and spontaneously the next breath arises all by itself and in itself a miracle. So follow the rhythm of your own breath for the next minute or so. So when you are ready, you can return to the moment and open your eyes slowly. So purpose and meaning in life. And I was thinking this morning, this is not to be confused with corpus in life, which is another matter altogether, but nonetheless important. So we can think about defining these words, but it's not always possible completely. Purpose is sometimes defined as intention or aim or goal. It's hard to imagine it really meaning the proper function for which something exists, but that can be debated later. Meaning is hard to define, but can include to be of some account and to matter. Something should matter. Perhaps we should matter. So let's consider the thoughts of three great scholars, the Venerable Master Sing Yun said contentment is of prime importance in life because, it, because of the joy that it brings, that is, well-being arises through contentment. The Dalai Lama says the development of deep compassion leads to a meaningful life, and he and others recommend following the Bodhisattva way of life by Shanti Deva. And Thich Nhat Hanh, he warns us that the idea of meaning in life may present an obstacle and recommends becoming fully present to the wonders of life, self, flowers, Mother Earth, the stars, which will nourish and heal and inspire us. The next slide. So through the great Buddhist insights, as we've mentioned of the Four Noble Truths, the Noble Eightfold Path, the Conditioned Dependent Origination, Padika Samyapada, and the Three Marks of Conditioned Existence, each of these profound insights that we can share. And these give us further insight into the wonders of life and also the certainty of death. So meaning and purpose, meaning and purpose in life, arise by fully recognizing the reality of anatta or non-self and our own inner Buddha nature the essential interbeing of all life, whether this interbeing is a connection between human and non-human, sentient and non-sentient, or with other non-living creations, other existent phenomena. And all of this connection bathed in wisdom, consciousness and compassion. And importantly, we should just simply rest in that ultimate awareness. That is enough. That provides meaning, purpose, and true belonging. No specific action is necessary. There is no need to strive to be proactive, to make meaning. No need to identify one's unique talents. No need to work hard to bring them to reality. In ancient Greece, Socrates, whose lifetime overlapped that of the Buddha, developed the virtue ethics of eudaimonia, a very useful concept representing the condition of human flourishing and of living well. 
achieved by the two great Greek imperatives. First, to know yourself, and second, to become who and what you are. And as Shanryu Suzuki proclaimed, each of us should rejoice in being perfect the way we are, but knowing that we could all use a little improvement. And remember the wonderful Desiderata by Max Ehrman. Quoting from that, beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. You belong. And you might also ask, do leaves, butterflies and raindrops ever wonder what is my purpose in life? So in the matter of meaning, I think it's important to think of this wonderful book, Man's Search for Meaning, 1946 by Viktor Frankl, a psychiatrist who survived the Holocaust, but his pregnant wife, mother, father, and brother all died in the camps. And he himself lived more than 50 years to bring solace to traumatized people, only dying in 1997. But even as a young man, in the 1920s, as a medical student, he organized youth counseling centers to address the high number of teen suicides, demonstrating that at that time he had an established purpose in life that was spontaneous and of great value. But later in Auschwitz, he identified self-transcendence, an essential spiritual freedom that remains when everything else is taken away, including those we love. This makes life meaningful and purposeful to choose one's own view and the way in this world to look outward from oneself and importantly, to be discovered. And you might look at the colorful bird on the cover of his book against the drab gray of the concentration camp in the background. Next slide. So here, some images to contemplate in the matter of purpose, meaning, and belonging, to deeply know the infinite beauty and wonder of the flower behind the name, to experience into being with the flower, and to recognize our own flower elements. So by deep awareness of into being with all life, acknowledging our interdependence with our myriad brothers and sisters of all the kingdoms of creation. I love this image. So here we have a composite elephant and boy together. And I wonder what they are thinking about the meaning of their life. And finally, this is an ultimate representation of meaning and purpose. So back to you Zhao Meng, and we will break out into rooms for further discussion on these matters. Uh, thank you, Dr. Page for reminding uh, us that the purpose in life arises by recognition of non-self, interbeing, our own Buddha nature, and rest in the ultimate awareness. So now let's contemplate and discuss about the following questions. Do you believe that you have an underlying spiritual purpose in your life beyond the daily tasks? Does this purpose relate to some inner quality talent or intuition that you have, or perhaps share with others? Is it important that life has meaning? What does this even mean? And does a purpose in life and a sense of meaning actually improve your well-being, your sense of contentment or not? Now we will be placed in groups of three to four to share and discuss in the discussion, we do recommend you spending some time to get to know each other and then discussing the questions. There will be some Zoom notifications to guide you, but feel free to let the flow of your discussions guide you. Our sessions are guided by Meta, which is unconditional love and kindness for all sentient beings. Let's use these breakout sessions to express and receive loving kindness to and from one another and take time to pause, share, and listen. We'll also ask you to share some of your findings with the larger group at the end of the breakout discussion. 
So now let's go to our breakout rooms for rich and nourishing discussions. See you all back in 15 minutes. Welcome back from your breakout groups. Now, if you have some inspiration or some thoughts or wisdom, you can feel free to place them in the chat box to share with everybody else in perpetuity, and these will be acknowledged. So uh, we may not have time to read them all, but feel free as the insight or the inspiration arises, then transfer that to words in the chat box, please. Yeah, now there's some wisdom coming in already. Yes, the anchoring, anchoring of our life to purpose and meaning, even when we're not aware of it, I guess. But we can become aware of that. Yes, and attending to this very moment is important. So that's that's awareness and focus deeply. <laughs> Joyce, <laughs> minimizing your greed, hatred and delusion. <laughs> that was very honest. And then, uh, boy, there's this balanced spiritual mind. Uh, thanks, Mai, for this. Um, yes, and that leads to understanding. Making wholesome, I love that, wholesome decisions and actions that make life purposeful. Yes, thank you very much. So continue offering your, your wisdom. Uh, thank you and sharing it with everybody. And I'll return now to Zhao Meng. And we'll conclude the first part of our meeting. Okay, thank you, Dr. Page. We really hope the check-in session was helpful to you. And we hope you experienced the unconditional love and compassion of this community. But for anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than what today could meet, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And you can also reach out to the professional organizations on the screen. And a kind reminder for anyone who might be interested in studying at Nantian Institute, the deadline to apply for the Xinyun Education Foundation Scholarship of the second round this year will be 15th April. So go for it to review your unlimited potential with NTI and to enhance the well-being for the world. As we check out today, let's recite the dedication of marriage together to send love and compassion to whoever is in need. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. So thank you, Dr. Page, for leading the February sessions and guiding us to explore the four pillars of well-being, through which we gain new insights into the wonders of life. So for the March sessions, we will welcome another wonderful facilitator of our community, Joy, who will address the four hours of daily practice. We look forward to your humor and thought-provoking guidance. So thank you everyone for joining us. Now we will have our Euro post-check-in discussions. So please stay around if you have time. Otherwise, see you all again next Sunday at 11 a.m. And please remember to consider how our discussions today regarding the purpose in life can be applied in our daily lives. Thank you.